Hey everybody, Chef Britt here with ATBBQ.com and today I'm going to show you my take on a sweet potato casserole. Alright, welcome back to our side series where we show you how to make some amazing sides to go with your holiday meal. I'm going to show you how to make a classic sweet potato casserole, but we're going to make the marshmallow fluff ourselves. Let's just jump right in and cook the sweet potatoes. So I've got about two pounds of sweet potatoes here, and you can use up to two and a half for this recipe. And I'm just going to go through and poke through the skin a few times. And this is just going to help release some steam as they bake. All right, so I've got my sweet potatoes on my baking tray lined with a parchment, and I've got my Yoder smoker set to 400 degrees. I'm just going to go ahead and bake them until they're tender all the way through. So while the sweet potatoes are baking, we need to make our marshmallow fluff topping. The first thing that we need to do is separate our eggs. Okay, so there's a couple ways to separate an egg, but today I'm going to just show you a really easy way to do it with your hands. I'm going to crack all the eggs directly into a bowl. I'm going to be very gentle. Now with my hands, I'm just going to get in there and separate the yolks. It's really important to have a delicate hand. If you have very fresh eggs, you're going to have a harder time getting out of the shell. And if you have old eggs, they're going to be a little more likely to break. But it's really important that you have clean egg whites in the end. OK, so today I'm going to use the Anchor Shroom Mixer to whip up our eggs. And I'm going to add a half teaspoon of cream of tartare to add a little acidity and to bump up the fluffiness of our egg whites. I'm going to go ahead and start it on a low speed just to get it all incorporated while we get our sugar component going. So I'm going to add to this small clean saucepan about two thirds cup of sugar and about two thirds cup of corn syrup. So I'm going to just add enough water to hydrate all the sugar in here. About a half a cup. So we're going to wait until all of the sugar is fully hydrated. I've got a little dry spot right there and I can just encourage that by shaking the pan around a little bit. I also want to make sure that the sides of the pan are totally clean so that way my sugar syrup doesn't crystallize while it's cooking. All right, so I'm going to turn up the heat to pretty hot. If you're using a gas range like this, you want to make sure that the fire is not creeping up the side of the pan. Otherwise, you'll just use high heat. Once this comes up to a full boil, you'll want to use an instant read thermometer to see where you're at. We're cooking this to 235 to 240. And once it gets past 220, it really doesn't take long to get there. I like 236 as a number, so we're going to go ahead and cut the heat and bring it over to our whipping egg whites. So once you've got your sugar syrup cooked to the right temperature, you're going to turn up the speed on your mixer. So I'm waiting until I get a little bit of foam actually happening before I add my sugar syrup. And once I get that, I'm going to slowly add my sugar syrup down the side of the bowl. That way I don't scramble my eggs. We're just going to do a slow stream until it's all incorporated and you'll watch your egg whites just fluff up into this beautiful meringue. Look at that. Really fluffy. It's got an amazing shine in there. Now we just need to let it whip until it's cool to the touch. While this is cooling, I'm going to go ahead and set up my piping bag. I've got a couple tricks. I like to fold this over. And today I'm going to use a round piping tip. The larger the better. And then I'm just going to use this paring knife to cut off the edge to get a clean cut there. And then I'll set 
my piping bag up. Just like that. All right, so this is cooled to room temp. I'm gonna remove the beaters and fold in a little vanilla. Look at those stiff peaks. This is perfect, that's how you want your meringue to look. If it hasn't gotten to this point, you might wanna start over. So for a little umph of flavor, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and I'm gonna fold it in. All right, now I'm gonna transfer it into my piping bag. out. Now I'm just going to close it up, fold my edge back over. Cinch the top and push it through to the edge. Great. So now that this is finished, I'm just gonna hold it at room temp until my sweet potatoes are ready to mash up and put in my casserole pan. Um, what's nice about this marshmallow fluff is that it actually keeps for up to a week uh, in a sealed container, so that's nice. All right, so it's been about an hour and 15 minutes, so let's check on our sweet potatoes here. All righty. So I'm just gonna poke them here and see if they're tender all the way through and I'm not meeting any resistance so I think that's great. If these have gone as far as to burst open and have some of their sugar spilling out that'd be okay. So now that our sweet potatoes are cooked we're gonna bring it all together. But first I'm gonna glove up. If you want to handle these potatoes while they're hot just make sure to use a knit glove layered with a nitrile glove on the outside and then you can handle anything that's hot. So I'm just gonna cut it open here and cut them in half and we'll just scoop out the insides. Nice and tender. Careful to make sure the skin doesn't fall into your mash because that wouldn't be very pleasant. You can even just get your hands in there. Just scrape it off the skin, however you like to do it. So next we're gonna add some mascarpone cheese. This is a great way to add some creaminess without a lot of work. I'm just gonna add about eight ounces here. And then we're also gonna add about three tablespoons of our John Henry sugar maple rub here. And this is gonna bring salt, a little brown sugar, and that maple flavor that we are loving so much with our sweet potatoes. And we'll just mash it all in. until it all comes together. Oh, I see a little piece of skin. I'll get rid of that. You can go as far as leaving it a little chunky if you like it that way, or you can just keep going until it's totally mushed down. I'm gonna go ahead and add a cup of some toasted pecans. Actually, this is about a half a cup, just for a nice textural component. All right, so I'm gonna transfer my sweet potato filling here to my deep dish pie pan. And I'm just gonna spread it evenly. If you wanted to at this point, just hold it hot if you are gonna make this ahead of time. I would just keep it in an oven at about 200 degrees 
covered with foil. All right, next comes the fun part where we get to pipe the marshmallow topping on. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold one hand down here to push the filling through, and I'm gonna cinch with the top with my other hand here. And I'm just gonna do a fun little circular design around the edge to start. And notice how I'm holding my, my tip very still so that the dome shape will just naturally occur as I push the filling through. You could use a fluted tip if you like that design. Today I just felt like using a round tip. All right, and then I'm just gonna keep going through. I'm gonna fill all the spaces. I'm gonna start with some big domes. And then I'll fill it in with some smaller domes and just keep it nice and playful. You don't necessarily have to pipe this too. If you start piping and you decide you don't like how it looks, you can just smooth it out with a spatula and just fill it in however you feel like and get a cool swirl action happening that way. I'm just gonna go and fill in all these gaps and then we'll do the extra fun part, torching it. So I'm gonna just get the gas going here. Don't let the kids do this part. We'll just bring it around until it's got that nice golden brown color. Oh, it smells so good, like a campfire. Let's dig in here. I'm gonna add a little bit more pecans on there. This practically is dessert. Honestly, this is the best sweet mashed potatoes I've ever had. It's really buttery with that mascarpone and that sugar maple seasoning just really makes it pop and gives it that savory edge that it needs. And the pecans bring a nice crunch and that marshmallow fluff, well, I could just eat that straight. Well, thanks for joining me today. If you like what you see, head on over to atbbq.com to see all the products we use today. And join me next week when I show you how to make a corn and wild rice spoon bread. All Things Barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.